Halo Infinite has fallen outside of Xbox's top 5 and outside of Steam's top 100. Let's talk about it, but first, the Game Leap website. You gotta go right now, down below, if you want to improve, if you want more guides and tips and tricks and VOD reviews, we have so much on the Game Leap website and we post more daily. So, do yourself a favor and go check it out right now, down below. Now, this was an article that was actually released by Forbes and it talks about the huge decay in players in Halo Infinite. Well, Halo Infinite at launch had tons of hype, tons of players, and it got more people playing Halo than ever before. All of that quickly petered out and Halo is rapidly free falling as far as people consistently playing the game. And from a content perspective, I can speak to this as well because our viewership has been just going down a cliff since the start or the launch of Halo Infinite. Now this information was posted as a thread on the Halo Reddit and it just completely blew up with tons of people talking to each other and asking the question, what is the big problem? Why is Halo bleeding so many players? And how can 343 fix it? And undoubtedly, the number one response is lack of content and features. We already know that there's gonna be a whole bunch of changes coming later this month in season two and in season three. However, as of right now, the content is completely dried up. There are little bits of patches that are coming through. There are little skin sets coming through, tiny little modes coming through. But as far as the game as a whole, it feels incredibly hollow. Honestly, if we could do it all again, it would make a lot more sense that Halo went into a beta where people could play it for maybe two weeks. And that would be a beta and then the game would not be released until, you know, season two or season three when all of these features come through. It doesn't really make sense to push a game through when you have all these features that need to be implemented waiting in the wings and you're kind of just pushing the game through. I don't know why. Maybe you want to hit that peak hype. You want to hit that Christmas hype. I'm not entirely sure what the case may be, but to release Halo in the state that it is, and I'm not even talking about the problems like cheaters and ping and desync and all that stuff. Those are things that I think are perfectly okay to to start to develop for and fix when the game is live. But the things that I don't think are acceptable to have people wait for is, you know, co-op campaign, forge, freaking infection. All of these modes just are not in the game. And it's not like 343 didn't know that these would be important. There was a decision somewhere, whether it was 343 or somewhere even higher up that just decided, hey, let's not put those in the game right now so that we can trickle it in later on so that people get content or they weren't done and they didn't think hey we should probably delay this or how about we just release a beta instead we release a beta for a little while give people a little taste see what's going on see what's wrong see what's right and then we'll delay the main game however long it needs to be to release. There was a lot of decision points that could be made there that would have made a lot more sense. And while the launch of Halo was really successful, the idea of Halo Infinite is to be a 10 year game. And that is a very long timeline, yes, but I think that the most important thing is to have consistent updates and a consistent timeline. You can have a game that lasts for a very long time and we can look at a lot of examples. Let's take Apex for instance, that just today is about to launch a huge new season with tons of new features and all this stuff. You have to understand that they consistently add new content. They put a timeline with new characters and new features and new maps with a three month period block. So players know what to expect. They know that there's a trickle of content coming in and players are satisfied with the variety of content. And Halo needs to do something very similar if it wants to keep people entertained. I do actually think that Forge will be a really big feature that will be released as long as it doesn't have some crazy bugs that are not the type we like to abuse, but the type that actually break Forge. I think that that allows for a ton of players to just keep coming back, right? If Forge is in the game, I feel like I could come up with infinite variabilities to play with subscribers or play with friends and we'll never get freaking bored of doing whatever we want to do in Forge, but it's really important to put those things in place. It's really important that you make sure to get people consistently coming back, whether it's with the cosmetic system, whether it's with the replayability, whatever the case may be, because if people leave for now or for a while, you're hoping that when all these things kind of line back up, people come back and is there any guarantee 
Not necessarily if another game comes along. Not necessarily if there are bigger releases that come around that people are far more interested in. And I'm not saying that for the vast majority of you and me, we love Halo, right? All of us will keep coming back, especially if the game gets to a point where it's a lot better way later down the line. Maybe it's two months, maybe it's three months. We will stay with the game and we will come back and maybe we'll take a little break here and there, but we'll come back when there's tons of content to play. However, for your average player, you really want to hook them in and keep them in for as long as possible. And the content is just not there. The features are just not there. And then you combine the lack of features, the hollowness of the game with all of the other issues. You no, know, the desync, the lag, the ping, the cheaters, the cosmetics, the list goes on and on and on. You combine all those things together. And then what you get is a game that is not deep enough to get people to play it consistently in spite of all those other issues, right? I think you could have some of those issues if the game had just, you know, Forge and all these modes and all this fun shit to do. No one would care about these issues that much or it wouldn't be a deal breaker, right? Or you could have a pretty shallow game, but it doesn't have any of those issues. And you're like, you know, this game might not have a ton of content or features, but at least it doesn't lag. At least there's no desync. At least the cheater problem is taken care of and I can grind competitive and the competitive integrity is perfect. And it doesn't matter because the game is running smooth, right? But you can't have all these problems everywhere. You can't have problems coming from every fucking orifice of the game and expect people not to leave. Now that doesn't mean that the hardcore fans aren't gonna leave and that doesn't mean that I don't have faith in 343. Specifically, later in this month, we'll have that big update where 343 is supposed to fix a lot of problems and that will give us a really good benchmark. We haven't seen that yet, so we don't know exactly how much they're going to do. But if it's similar to the big team battle thing where, you know, they say they're going to fix a whole bunch of stuff and none of it's actually fixed and they have to refix it and refix it. Or maybe they release it and it's like, hey, we fixed monetization and uh, you might get like 10 better ping per game or something like that. I don't know what it could be, but basically this is like the really big important time frame where we know how 343 is going to handle the game going forward and then when they drop that timeline which they said they plan to do as soon as possible so i'm guessing that means this month at least by the end of this month we'll really know exactly where halo is headed and will 343 be able to reverse this free fall what do you think i want to hear your opinion down below do you think that this was just gonna happen no matter what do you think that this could be something that could be turned around completely and Halo could surpass its all-time peak? Or do you think that no matter what 343 does, all they're doing now is just trying to secure the people that are still here and the people that have left will never come back? I want to hear your opinion about all that and why down below. As for my personal opinion, I do think that 343 could get a lot of people back and could even bring tons more people in, especially when Forge comes out, especially when there's a lot of funny videos, there's channels that are making meme videos, there's TikToks, there's YouTube shorts about Halo Infinite Forge. I really think that it's going to drag a lot of people back in, but they're going to leave right again unless all these problems are fixed. When that is the attractor, there needs to be a huge payoff and the payoff is tons of features, none of these problems, a good monetization system, and uh, 343 has a lot of work to do, but I am incredibly hopeful. But if you wanna climb to Onyx and above, go to the Game Leap website right now for in-depth tips, tricks, VOD reviews, map guides, and so much more. Do yourself a favor and go check it out right now. Down below.